I received a question from an Alibre user about how to do compound curves. Let's get into it. Let's talk about compound curves. In Alibre, I received a question, how do I make a curve kind of like the roof of this rail car? So let's get into how to be pretty specific about compound curves. Now the first uh, inclination that you might have is to loft, and that gets complicated pretty quick. Uh, maybe lofting. Is, is something that you can try, which we'll do in this video, but also uh, let's try a different technique altogether. And let's start by making something that would produce a compound curve. I'm gonna activate a sketch here, and I'll go with an elliptical arc. I'll start my arc right on the origin, and uh, now I can draw my arc. Now first, I'll zoom in and make sure that my arc endpoint is uh, horizontal there, and I'll grab a vertical and use a vertical point there, whoop, already in there, so that's good. Next, I'll give a dimension here. We'll give this a dimension of five, and I'll give this a dimension of 2.5. Next, we wanna make sure that our arc endpoint knows where to end, which of course will be horizontal to the origin. I'll close off my elliptical arc with a line. So you don't have to do an elliptical arc, but with compound curves, I wildly see common elliptical profiles in compound cur curves more than almost anything else. So uh, I think this is most common, but of course you can use your lines and arcs and whatever else you want to define what you want this to be. We'll deactivate now and we'll do a revolve. And let's go with 90. And there you can see a compound curve uh, where you have this elliptical arc that is uh, moving around an axis. But that's pretty simple and that's probably not exactly what you're looking for. You probably want something a bit more complicated. And uh, most commonly when I see compound curves it's people who want to loft say one elliptical profile to a much tighter elliptical profile or looser, right? Maybe into a full circle. So let's talk about that. What I will do from here is actually scale this part and let's do a scale factor of 1.5 and so this will become more circular and less elliptical. I'll make this a, oh, but first I wanna make sure that this is a non-uniform scale and in the Z direction, right? You can see in our origin where the Z direction is, we'll be going a factor of 1.5 while leaving every other scale the same. And there we've been able to make a more circular version of this loft. Now, I also can edit and say, ah, I want my factor to be two. Now what's interesting is if we, if we uh, look, this vertical dimension was 2.5 and this horizontal dimension was five. So if I go to a scale factor of two, now we're actually lofting to a half circle, right? A constant radius arc. So you can uh, go from arcs to ellipses and so on just through scale. But I'll go ahead and keep this at a factor of 1.5. So this is a bit more compoundy, like what we are going for. But of course I want this to be hollow and I also wanna add some contours to this. So let's work on our contours next. What I'll do is on the XY plane, I'll activate a sketch. In this sketch, I will grab an arc first of all and another arc over here. And we'll use a vertical constraint and take the end point of this arc, vertical with our origin, center point of the arc, vertical with the origin also. We'll take the end of this arc and make it vertical with its center point. And then we'll grab a coincident over here and we'll make sure that it's coincident to the bottom there. Next, I'll grab a line, just like that. And we'll make sure that it is tangent there and tangent there. Next, and I'll grab a dimension and take this endpoint and make it 0.75 above the origin. And then I'll assign this a radius of 7.75. And then I'll assign this a radius of 4.5. 
And then how far out do I want this to be? I'll take this endpoint and my center point and we'll make this something like 4.25. And now we'll make a line from here to here and there. Now that we have a closed off sketch, I'll deactivate and extrude cut through all. And then I can simply mirror my contour over here. And that's great, but uh, we might want this to be uh, hollow, right? And, and, and at a constant thickness is that. And trying to redo everything but in cut ways to get this to go hollow is a bit much, so let's go with shell instead. I click on a face to shell, I can change the thickness to 0 0.1 whichever thickness I'd like. And there we go. I'll say okay to that. And we were able to create a compound curve that has a nice contour to it, much like the train that we have seen. That isn't the only option. Maybe you want to be uh, setting this part up in a different way that doesn't involve um, scaling. I think scaling is probably the cleanest option, but there is another option to try. It's less reliable though, as it kind of asks a lot computationally of a Libre and of any other CAD platform. So um, use this next method with some caution and some uh, expectations that it might not work the way that you want. We'll go ahead and make a new part and try this all over again with a different uh, set of characteristics here. So first I'll go on my XY plane. In this sketch I'll make a line here and a line there and we'll give this a dimension of 1.5 and this a dimension of 5 and then I'll make an elliptical arc from here to there to there and I'll go from this point to that point. There we have a fully enclosed profile. Next, I'll start a sketch on the YZ plane. We do the same thing. All right, so there I've got two sketches that converge and I go to loft. Well, you can see that we've got this straight line thing going on and I say, oh, you know what? I want to make sure that there's a tangency and oh, because we converge on that same line, tangency is not possible computationally for this um, loft. So that's a problem. Maybe we want to add guide curves, right? And so I go to add a guide curve and for that, I'll project from here to here. And actually, I make sure that uh, I've got those as reference figures. Next, we'll go from there to there to there and there, just like that. Okay, there's a good guide curve. So we're going to ignore that it's not closed because that's how we want it. And we're going to loft from here to here and include this guide curve, uh, maybe locally. And that is one way that we can do it. And then I can go ahead and mirror the entire part. Just like that. So I, I'm not convinced that this guide curve is 100% reliable, but it does work. Uh, there is another option if that is not 100% reliable and you really have to get things done. Uh, there's, there's another option that I can do, which will be, we'll go into the sketch. And I'm going to break a few things. We're going to make this line an inch away from the origin. And we're going to go with trim. Now we've lost a bunch of uh, constraining geometry, so we'll make sure and play with our sketch to see 
where it's loose, we'll reapply that 1.5 dimension. And here it looks like we need to be horizontal, so we'll go ahead and select horizontal. And this point should be horizontal there, just like that. Now where else are we able to move? Looks like we need to add a vertical. So we'll add a vertical to this point, and we're fully constrained again. Next, I'll edit my other sketch, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to move a line in one inch. We're going to uh, trim out the part that we don't want. So we just have sketches that don't converge on a single point. And then I ask, well, where can I move that I don't want to move? And of course, I need to reapply my dimension here. But once again, 1.5. Then we need to reapply the horizontals because that was deleted from our trim operation. And then we got this point right here. So we'll add a coincident and make sure that we're coincident onto our end or else. We need to give this a dimension of one. So there's our one and there we have uh, our, uh, our part. And then uh, if I'd like to be a little bit more consistent, I'll edit my sketch three and add a guide curve with an arc from here to here. That's a constant radius. We'll ignore that and make sure our sketch three is perhaps a global guide curve. We can uh, go to our remove face and remove that face. So there is another way that we can do it. Uh, again, it's this is a little bit tricky to do that remove face. So you know, expect that 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 might potentially error out or something else, but these, these are ways that, uh, that you can get those kinds of compound curves you may be looking for. Uh, so I can go ahead and mirror my entire part across this face. Just like that, there's a way that we've got our uh, compound curve, or we can do it uh, the other ways shown in the video. So hopefully that's helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.